Good evening, Dr. Phil here. Today we'll be discussing on opioid antagonists. Naloxone Naloxone is synthesized in 1961. It is the first pure opioid antagonist ever synthesized. Structure It is the N allyl derivative of oxymorphone. Structurally, it is similar to morphine. Structural modifications such as OH group at C14 results in opioid antagonist activity. Routes of administration, IV, IO, IM, subcutaneous, sublingual, and endotracheal. Metabolism of naloxone is via glucuronidation in the liver to the inactive naloxone 3-glucuronide. Excretion is renal, half-life 1-2 to two hours. Mechanism of action of naloxone. Naloxone is a short-acting competitive opioid antagonist that is relatively selective for the MOP receptor. Its affinity for all three classic opioid receptors is ranked MOP more than KOP, more than DOP. Naloxone has a high affinity for MOP receptors but has no intrinsic activity. It blocks the actions of endogenous opioid peptides, morphine, and other exogenous opioids. It causes a parallel rightward shift of the opioid dose response relationship, opioid antagonism by naloxone and naltrexone is non specific. They antagonize all pharmacologic effects of opioids. The magnitude and duration of reversal of respiratory depression by naloxone depends on the pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic profile of the opioid that needs reversal and mode of administration of naloxone, such as via IV boluses or continuous infusion. Onset of action of naloxone is 1 to 2 minutes following IV injection. Some authors state 6.5 minutes. If via IM injection, the onset of action is 15 minutes. Duration of action of naloxone is 30 to 45 minutes. Some authors quote 60 to 90 minutes. Some quote 15 to 45 minutes. It is presumed to be due to its rapid removal from the brain. Clinical uses of naloxone. It is used to reverse unwanted effects of opioid agonists such as sedation, respiratory depression, and pruritus. Naloxone is able to reverse ventilatory depression due to opioids without reversing analgesia if titrated carefully. Opioid concentrations are often just above the threshold for respiratory depression. Respiratory depression from opioids occur at higher receptor occupancy rates than analgesia. Titration of naloxone 40 to 80 microgram bolus doses to accumulative dose of less than 400 micrograms is often sufficient to restore spontaneous breathing. For opioids with high affinity for MOP receptors such as buprenorphine, the naloxone titration opioid reversal approach mentioned above will be inadequate to reverse opioid effects. A continuous naloxone infusion, 2 to 4 mg per hour, will be needed to cause a slow but steady resumption of breathing activity. For remifentanil, termination of the infusion will provide a rapid return of spontaneous breathing and naloxone is unnecessary. Naloxone is used to treat opioid overdose. This shall be discussed in a subsequent section. Naloxone serves as a diagnostic test in patients suspected of having opioid overdose. Failure to respond to naloxone suggests a cause other than opioid overdose for the comatose state. Due to naloxone's low oral bioavailability of about 3%, naloxone can be administered orally with oxycodone to reduce its gastrointestinal adverse effects. Although naloxone's efficacy is questionable for the following indications, naloxone has been used to treat poisoning or overdose due to other depressant drugs, such as alcohols, benzodiazepines, and barbiturates. Naloxone has been used to increase blood pressure and cardiac output in septic shock, the mechanism of action for this is unclear. Naloxone may act by increasing endogenous catecholamine release or antagonizing endorphins which increases during sepsis. Naloxone is used as an experimental tool to determine the physiological role of endogenous opioid peptides. If naloxone is given to normal subjects, the pain threshold is largely unchanged. Naloxone antagonizes analgesia produced by endogenous opioids released during conditions such as stressful conditions involving inflammation, such as in patients undergoing dental surgery, acupuncture, and analgesia produced 
by PAG stimulation. Disadvantages of naloxone Repeated administration or continuous infusions of naloxone may be required as its short duration of action may not be adequate to prevent recurrence of adverse effects from longer-acting opioids such as morphine. Resolved signs of opioid toxicity following the administration of naloxone should be followed by repeat doses of naloxone at one-hour intervals or by a continuous infusion to reverse effects of longer-acting opioids. Naloxone reverses the analgesic effects of opioids and thus may be accompanied by a sudden major cardiovascular and sympathetic response due to severe pain resulting in tachycardia, hypertension, arrhythmias, pulmonary edema, seizures, myocardial ischemia, and cardiac arrest. Naloxone reverses the effects of pentazosin but poorly reverses the effects of buprenorphine. Acute opioid withdrawal symptoms may be precipitated in patients who are dependent on opioids. Patients may present with anxiety, abdominal cramps, vomiting, pillow erection, etc. Naloxone has a low and unpredictable bioavailability after oral intake due to an extensive first-pass effect, which is more than 95%. Dosage for naloxone Opioid poisoning Please follow your healthcare center's guidelines for dosing regimens. One example is 0.4 to 2 mg IV repeated after 2 to 3 minutes titrated to effect to a total of 10 mg. Example 2 for adults. For depressed sensorium, start with a 0.4 mg IV bolus. If no response in 2 to 3 minutes, give another 0.4 mg IV bolus. If no response in 2 to 3 minutes, give 2 mg IV bolus. If no response in 2 to 3 minutes, stop and reassess. A total dose of 0.8 mg should be effective in reversing the mental status changes induced by opioids. For respiratory depression, start with an IV bolus of 2 mg. If no response in 2 to 3 minutes, give a 4 mg IV bolus. If no response in 2 to 3 minutes, give a 10 mg IV bolus. If there is still no response in 2 to 3 minutes, give a 15 mg IV bolus. If no response in 2 to 3 minutes, stop and reassess. Opioids are an unlikely cause of respiratory depression if there is no response to 15 mg of naloxone. IV infusion The hourly dose of a continuous naloxone infusion should be two-thirds of the effective bolus dose diluted in 250 to 500 ml of isotonic saline infused over 6 hours. The typical dose range is 3 to 10 mcg per kg per hour to achieve steady-state naloxone levels in the early infusion period, administer a second IV dose of naloxone, half the original bolus dose, 30 minutes after naloxone infusion has started. Total duration of infusion varies according to the opioid and the dose ingested and averages 10 hours. The dose for naloxone for post-operative treatment of opioid adverse effects, IV 1.5 to 3 mcg per kg, followed by 1.5 mcg per kg repeated every 2 minutes as required. IV infusion dose, 3 to 10 mcg per kg per hour. For treatment of opioid adverse effects for neonates, the dose is 10 mcg per kg, IV, IM or subcutaneous, repeated every 2 to 3 minutes, or 60 mcg per kg IM, single dose, then followed by 10 mcg per kg per hour. Now Traxone. This drug is a MOP, DOP, and KOP receptor antagonist. Now Traxone is similar to Naloxone, but it has a longer duration of action of 10 hours up to 24 hours. Now Traxone is highly effective orally. Available preparations, oral formulation, and a slow-release subcutaneous implant formulation. Clinical uses of Now Traxone includes, it is useful for the management of opioid dependence. Now Traxone is effective in addicts who have been detoxified as it nullifies the effects of a dose of opioid should the patient relapses. Naltrexone is effective in reducing alcohol consumption in alcohol addicts. The euphoria from alcohol due to the release of endogenous opioid peptides is reduced by naltrexone. Naltrexone is also used to treat chronic pruritus that occurs in chronic liver disease. Other drugs used to reverse opioid effects. Opioid antagonists that do not cross the blood-brain barrier have been developed to reduce peripheral adverse effects caused by opioids 
such as constipation, without reducing analgesia or increasing withdrawal symptoms in an opioid-dependent patient. This includes methylnaltrexone bromide, alvimopan, and naloxagol. Now, mifin is a non-selective opioid antagonist used to treat alcoholics. Doxapram is one of the oldest respiratory stimulants used in clinical practice. It acts via inhibition of background potassium channels TASK1, TASK3, and TASK1 stroke 2 heterodimer on oxygen sensing cells in the carotid body. Disadvantages of doxapram include anxiety, panic attacks, hypertension, tachycardia, sweating, and convulsions. GAL021 is a novel potassium channel blocker acting at BK calcium channels. It does not produce doxapram like side effects. This drug is possibly useful for reversal or prevention of opioid induced respiratory depression and sleep related upper airway obstructions. CX717 is an ampokine that increases respiratory drive by its action at the AMPA receptor in the brainstem respiratory centers involved in rhythmogenesis. Opiate overdose presents with a history of opiate consumption which may or may not be present, a classical triad of meiosis, hypoventilation and coma. Other signs or complications include nausea and vomiting, hypotension, hypothermia, hypoglycemia, rarely pulmonary edema and rhabdomyolysis, convulsions. Convulsions is associated with the use of petidine, codeine, and dextroproproxifin. Diagnosis of opioid overdose. The classical triad are non-specific signs and may be absent. The patient's response to naloxone is probably the most reliable method to diagnose opioid overdose. Management of opioid overdose. Supportive management includes resuscitation according to ATLS guidelines and may involve measures such as gastric lavage, IV fluids, inotropes, oxygen therapy, intubation and intermittent positive pressure ventilation, and activated charcoal. Administer naloxone for opioid reversal. Kindly refer to the previous section for further details. These are my references. Thank you.